pH and electrical conductivity meters are extremely useful pieces of equipment used to measure and monitor basic chemical characteristics of water and growing media. Regular and correct calibration of this equipment is necessary to ensure the results are as accurate as possible. The following video describes the basic procedures for calibrating pH and EC meters. There are many different models of meters available, ranging from relatively inexpensive pocket meters to more robust and expensive top-of-the-range bench meters. Calibration procedures differ for each type and model. To give the greatest accuracy, meters need to be calibrated regularly, with either the interval since the last calibration or the number of tests completed being used to determine how often. Ideally, it is best to calibrate your meter before each sampling session. Alternatively, the following can be used as a guide as to how often to calibrate. Calibrating the unit against two pH buffers, known as a two-point calibration, will provide sufficient accuracy for most nursery situations. pH buffers of 4, 7 and 10 are the most common calibration buffer solutions, but for most nursery situations, a pH 4 and a pH 7 calibration will cover most commonly encountered pH readings. If only a one-point calibration is performed, a buffer should be selected about midway within the range of readings likely to be encountered during testing. For additional accuracy, some meters have the capacity to complete a three-point calibration. Most modern meters have the capacity to recognize the value of the buffer or standard being used and to automatically calibrate to each solution, simplifying the calibration process. The following is a list of basic materials and equipment required to successfully calibrate a pH and conductivity meter. If buffers require preparation before use, prepare the buffer according to the manufacturer's directions. Turn the meter on. Select the calibration mode and allow the readings to stabilise. For meters having automatic temperature compensation, the temperature probe must be in the same solution as the pH probe. Take the pH sensor out of the storage solution. Rinse the sensor with distilled water. Remove and carefully shake off any excess water. Immerse the pH sensor in a small quantity of pH 7 or pH 6.88 buffer, ensuring the end of the sensor is submerged to a depth of 2 to 5 centimetres. Allow the pH reading to stabilise, then calibrate the meter according to directions. Rinse the sensor in distilled water. Remove and very gently shake off any excess water. Immerse the pH sensor in a small sample of pH 4 buffer. Allow the pH reading to stabilise, then calibrate using the same method as the first calibration. Clean the sensor by carefully rinsing in distilled water and then gently shake off any excess water. Immerse the sensor in the standard solution in a plastic or glass container, ensuring the sensor is submerged to the depth of the hole and gently stir until the reading stabilises. Select the EC calibration mode, calibrate the meter according to the directions and check the reading. To prevent salt buildup on the sensor, Rinse the sensor with distilled water after calibration. Discard the calibration solution. Do not pour the remaining solution back into the original bottle, as this will contaminate the calibration solution. For a zero EC calibration, allow the sensor to air dry and calibrate as per manufacturer's directions. At the completion of calibrating the meter, record the results.
Further information on using pH and EC meters can be found in the article Calibrating pH and EC meters, available on the NGIQ Technical Information Library webpage. This video has been supported by the Queensland Government Department of Natural Resources and Mines under the Rural Water Use Efficiency Irrigation Futures Initiative. Special thanks go to the following businesses for their assistance in producing this video.